devices that are available in the player's handbook. But we will eventually examine some of the other races that were added in over the years since the release of this book. Races such as the Minotaur or the Kobold, for example. This is going to be part of a series where we take some time to look at different things within Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition and also learning how to build a character sheet, stuff like that. Um, I'm a really big fan of Dungeons and Dragons. I'm a dungeon master currently for a long running campaign in 5th edition. And this is something I just really enjoy making content about. So, let's go ahead and take a look inside these magical pages, 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 inside of the player's handbook. as well as one of my favorite fantasy characters. And 
He's got the flaming mug shield, the broken horn helm, the many notched axe. Uh, he's just an amazing character, and he's part of the uh, Dark Elf trilogy. Or, I'm sorry, the, um, well, it's, it's more than a trilogy now, basically the Drist series. It's a storyline about the Dark Elf Drist. He's a ranger in all of his adventures with his friends, and uh, Brunner's a big part of that. So, this beginning chapter teaches you how to make a character, and they create Brunner Battlehammer as an example of how to do so. So we'll definitely go over that at one point or another. So this is chapter two, races. And it goes over how to choose a race, um, things of that nature. It, it describes or talks about uh, different alignments and sizes and speeds, languages, sub races. Um, I guess, you know, we should probably just go over these racial traits just to give those who aren't familiar with the game a little bit of an idea. So, first you have your age, of course. Uh, that's pretty self explanatory. Then you have alignment. Um, I'll just read that little segment there. It says, most races have tendencies towards certain alignments described in this entry. These are not binding for player characters, but considering why your dwarf is chaotic, for example, and defiance of lawful dwarf society can help you better define your character. Uh, goes on to describe size. Oh, you know, before I go on the size, um, alignment also, basically it's determining what kind of character you might be playing. There's a lot of charts and things out there you can look at that give you character examples and movies and stuff. Um, but basically you have, what is it, neutral. Then you have chaotic neutral, which means they kind of do what they feel. There's no set rhythm. You have lawful neutral, so those who are neutral, but they tend to follow the order of society. Uh, you have good, chaotic good, lawful good. Lawful good's like that stereotypical paladin character that is ever so righteous and tries to do away with any evil that exists in the world. Um, you also have evil. You have chaotic evil. So, there's many different things that you could be. Alignments, I'm not the biggest fan of. I understand why they exist, especially in the older editions of the game, but I tend to just allow the characters to act as they believe they, um, they should. You know, they, many of them just take on their own personas and roleplay the characters in their mind. And tends to work out really well because I believe kind of like in um, in Game of Thrones or A Song of Ice and Fire there is no good or evil necessarily there's just, just decisions that people make and everyone is cast really in shades of grey and some of the best or in many people's eyes some of the uh, greatest people the people filled with good can sometimes do some pretty horrific things and sometimes what you would consider really evil people can do tremendous acts of good so I'm a big believer in that and not so much tying a character to alignment and having them stick with it no matter what uh, we have size so Characters could be different sizes, and they do. It, it rather it does affect the way the game is played, depending on what type of setting you're in, or how close to the rules you play as a dungeon master or a party. Uh, but most creatures are medium sized, which is roughly four to eight feet tall. Um, 
some members of smaller races are between two to four feet tall. And there are certain rules in the game that can affect them differently. Yeah. It makes an example here that some small creatures would have trouble wielding heavy weapons, for example, which is true. Uh, you then have your speed, which we'll go over later in character creation, but that's just how fast you move. Languages, that's self-explanatory. And then you have ra uh, sub-races. So you have different races within races. <laughs> sub-races, yeah. Uh, so for example, you have a dragonborn, but then you have different variations of dragonborn. Things of that nature. So, we're going to start off with the dwarf. There's a really cool quote here from Bruner Battlehammer. And it's from uh, The Crystal Shard, one of my favorite stories. I read it every winter season. It says here, Your late elf came the rough edge of a familiar voice. Bruner Battlehammer walked up the back of his dead foe, disregarding the fact that the heavy monster lay on top of his elven friend. In spite of the added discomfort, the dwarf's long, pointed, often broken nose and gray streaked through still fiery red beard came as a welcome sight to Trist. Knew I'd find ye in trouble if I came and looked for ye. <laughs> Good old burner. So, it says here, short and stout. So the dwarves, um, I think I mentioned here, I'll read this little segment. Bold and hardy, dwarves are known as skilled warriors, miners, and workers of stone and metal. Though they stand well under five feet tall, dwarves are so broad and compact that they can weigh as much as a human standing nearly two feet taller. Their courage and endurance are also easily a match for any of the larger folk. Pretty cool. Dwarven skin ranges from deep brown to a pale hue tinged with red, but the most common shades are light brown or deep tan, like so certain tones of the earth. Their hair Worn long, but in simple styles, is usually black, gray, or brown, though paler dwarves often have red hair. Male dwarves value their beards highly and groom them carefully. Long memory, long grudges. Dwarves can live to be more than 400 years old. So the oldest living dwarves often remember very, a very different world. For example, some of the oldest dwarves living in Citadel Felbar, in the world of the Forgotten Realms, can recall the day more than three centuries ago when orcs conquered a fortress and drove them into an exile that lasted over 250 years. This longevity grants them a perspective on the world that shorter lived races such as humans and halflings lack. Dwarves are solid and enduring, like the mountain 
ones they love, weathering the passage of centuries with stoic endurance and little change. They respect the traditions of their clans, tracing their ancestry back to the founding of their most ancient strongholds in the youth of the world and don't abandon those traditions lightly. Part of those traditions is devotion to the gods of the dwarves who uphold the dwarven ideals of industrious labor, skill in battle, and devotion to the forge. Individual dwarves are determined and loyal, true to their word, decisive in action, sometimes to the point of stubbornness. Many dwarves have a strong sense of justice, and they are slow to forget wrongs they have suffered. A wrong done to one dwarf is a wrong done to the dwarf's entire clan, so what begins as one dwarf's hunt for vengeance can become a full-blown clan feud. Clans and kingdoms. stretch deep beneath the mountains, where the dwarves mine gems and precious metals and forge items of wonder. They love the beauty and artistry of precious metals and fine jewelry, and in some dwarves this love festers into avarice. Whatever wealth they can't find in their mountains, they gain through trade. They dislike boats, so enterprising humans and halflings frequently handle trade in dwarven goods along water routes. Trustworthy members of other races are welcome in dwarf settlements though some areas are off-limits even to them. The chief unit of dwarven society is the clan, and dwarves highly value social standing. and 
ancestry are also important motivators. A dwarf might seek to restore a clan's lost honor, avenge an ancient wrong the clan suffered, or earn a new place within the clan after having been exiled. Or a dwarf might search for the axe wielded by a mighty ancestor lost on the field of battle centuries ago. some of the dwarf traits. You have the ability score increase of plus two in constitution. Uh, it does give an age range for some dwarves. An alignment size speed. Here we go, dark vision. Uh, so dwarves have dark vision, which means they can see in uh, darkness even though up to 60 feet, um, even though it's dark, uh, they don't see, like, like when it's really dark, like in a cave or something, when you have dark vision, you don't actually see the color differences. Uh, you see in shades of gray, essentially. Resilience. You have advantage on saving throws against poison, and you have resistance against poison damage. Uh, dwarven combat training. You have proficiency with the battle axe, hand axe, light hammer, and war hammer. Uh, let's see here. There's also Proficiency. You gain proficiency with the artisan tools of your choice, either the smith's tools, brewer's supplies, or mason's tools. There's also stone cunning. Whenever you make an intelligence history check related to the origin of stonework, you are considered proficient the history skill and add double your proficiency bonus to the check instead of your normal proficiency bonus. Uh, you can read and write common and dwarvish. Those are the languages. And there are two main types of sub races that you can choose from. You have what's known as the hill dwarf. Um, as a hill dwarf, you have keen senses deep intuition, and remarkable resilience. The gold dwarves of Faerun in their mighty southern kingdom are hill dwarves, as are the exiled Neander and the debased Klar of Kern in the Dragonland setting. Uh, hill dwarves get a plus one wisdom score, and they also receive dwarven toughness. Your hit point maximum increases by one, and it increases by one every time you gain a level. You can also choose to be a mountain dwarf. As the mountain dwarf, you're strong and hardy, accustomed to the difficult life and rugged terrain. You're probably on the tall side for a dwarf, and tend toward lighter coloration. The shield dwarves of northern Faerun as well as the ruling Alar clan and the noble Dwar clan of Dragonlance are mountain dwarves. Ability score increase is plus two to strength. You also receive dwarven armor training. You 
you have proficiency with light and medium armor. There's a third sub race as well, the Durger. In the cities deep in the Underdark live the Durger or Great El or Great Dwarves. These vicious, stealthy slave traders raid the surface world for captives, then sell the, their prey to the other races of the Underdark. They have innate magical abilities to become invisible and to temporarily grow to giant size. So that was the dwarven race and the different sub races within the player's handbook. Uh, I didn't realize when I started this adventure myself how long each race might take to go through. With going it through as many details as are provided in this book. Uh, I know not every one of them is as fleshed out as the dwarf, but I think we'll call a video here for today, having finished up the dwarf race. And then in the next D&D video, We'll go over the elf. Uh, this right here is Driss Dwarden, the drow ranger I told you about earlier. He's pretty awesome. So we'll get to learn a little bit more about him, perhaps, and uh, we'll definitely go ahead and take a look at the elves next time. If you like this video and like the kind of dungeon and dragons content, then please let me know in the comments below. And please give this video a like and uh, subscribe as well so you get more videos like this. Most importantly.